were wonderful, Miss Trevor. Thanks. Terrific. Thank she you. She always is. Congratulations. Copy, Mona. Exhausted. Thanks very much, Miss Trevor. Now about next season. She can't talk now. Not now. Miss Trevor, I want to ask you how to... Maybe later. Come, Mrs. Shistaya, please. Thanks, Ricky. Miss Trevor, and so ends another successful season. Mona, you were wonderful. Thanks, Ricky. But I'm exhausted. The first thing I'm going to do is sleep for a week. <laughs> you earn a good rest, dear. <laughs> you sure sung, Miss Mona. Just like one of them birds that sings at night. Not owls. <laughs> no, ma'am, they only hoot. <laughs> Come in. Say, Mr. Martinelli, there's a nut downstairs that says he's got to see you right now. A nut? Oh, if it's who I think it is. Go for this. Finish. Mona Travers. Wouldn't you think she'd marry somebody handsome and romantic? Like Carlos. Oh, Mr. Arnold. An L.A. Hoy. I think he's here. If he is, I've got the most wonderful surprise for Mona. But don't tell her. Come in. Oh, it's you, Carlos. I thought it was Paul. Is it always going to be Paul? Now, Carlos, you're being silly again, and you promised you wouldn't. Oh, I know I promised. Well, I'm sorry. Now that the season is over, when, how am I going to see you? You're not. You can't mean that, Mona. While we're here, at least I could hold you in our love scenes. Carlos, you mustn't say things like that. It's stupid. I've got to say them, Mona. Doesn't my love mean anything to you? You can take that. Just pretend it never happened attitude about it. Listen, Carlos. You go away somewhere this summer and forget all about me. When the new season opens, we'll laugh at this together. Oh, no, Mona. I'll... Paul! Perhaps I'm interrupting. Whatever kept you so late? I've been waiting for you. Apparently. I've been circulating among the crowd, listening to praises of you and uh, your lover. Paul, what do you mean? Your lover. He is, isn't he? In the opera. Oh. How are you, Duran? I have felt better. I'll see you again tonight. Of course. Oh, well, must you go? Unfortunately. I'm sorry. Oh, no matter. Let's forget it. Were you at the laboratory late? Oh, rather. I didn't even have time for dinner. Now, Paul, you know you... Yes, I know. But I had so many last things to take care of. Well, I was down at the river all afternoon. The yacht's ready. Any time you are. Uh... Isn't it going to be wonderful? All those weeks of nothing but sea and sky. I just can't stand to think about it. I go straight to sleep. And we'll be all alone. Not a soul. To... Yes, excepting 20 sailors. <laughs> Rachel's column says we're going to the South Seas. Then let's fool him and go to the North Pole. What else did he say? With a certain glamorous blonde opera singer and her handsome... I'm sorry. I've tried and tried not to believe it, but... Frankly, Mona, it's all so logical. This Carlos, after all, he's everything a woman wants. He likes the things you like, understands art, music. I can't even carry a tune without spilling it. Paul, I don't know what more I can do than to give you my constant assurance that there's nothing... Oh, you do understand it's only because I... I can't see why you love me. I'm not young or handsome or romantic. 
My work isn't interesting to you, puttering around with cultures and serums. Paul, you're doing a great work. I don't have to be interested in bacteriology to admire you for what you're doing. But that's beside the point, Mona. I'm not of your world. Carlos is. It's only natural Oh, Paul, that... I can't stand these continual scenes. I've told you a thousand times I'd rather never sing another note than to have you... But you must. You understand I love you doing what you're doing. All this publicity, the constant innuendos, always Carlos, Carlos, Carlos... Stop it! I can't stand it. Carlos means nothing to me, do you hear? Nothing! Oh, I'm so tired. So tired. Forgive me, Mona. Oh, I do believe you. It's only because I love you so that I make you so miserable. Only say that you forgive me and it'll never happen again. I promise you. We say that every time, don't we? He's here! Got here for the second act! Dear, he's been on a tour, you know. I didn't think he would make it, but he did it. And he heard you. Who, oh, Ricky? Caparini from Italy. He's going to direct your next season. Caparini? Yes. Ah, divine. <laughs> Magnificent. <laughs> Tremendous. Swell. Well, well I, I can't tell you how I appreciate your enthusiasm, Signor Caparini. Oh, oh, this is Mr. Arnold, my husband. How do you do? Uh, Mr. Trevor, uh, how nice for you. <laughs> and the Italian, uh, it's good? Fairly. Fairly? It must be good to sing La Tosca. Tosca? Si! We open next season with La Tosca. Uh, uh, come, come, I'll tell you what to do. Sit, sit down, please. Ah. Ah, no. Oh, thank you. Excuse me, please. Ah. For every scene, you must feel how to place your voice while you are practicing the summer. Oh, Mona, you're having supper with me tonight, aren't you? No, 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 no. It is impossible now. You come back later, perhaps, maybe. Of course uh, I am, Paul. You must forgive me, Signor Caparini. I'm much too tired to go over this tonight. We'll make an appointment for tomorrow, any time you like. But I cannot do that tomorrow. I am sailing tomorrow. Everything must be fixed tonight so that you know what you're doing with your voice this summer. <laughs> I know you are tired, dear, but it won't take so very long. And even if you do have your supper a little later, after all, you won't be working tomorrow. Would you mind very much, Paul, if we made it later? Oh, not at all. I quite realize how important this is. Ah, now we get some places. Mr. Trevor, you will not be in our way if you would like to wait here. You're certain of that, eh? Certain, I am certainly. But you must keep still. We do not listen to you. We do not hear. We do not mind you. Where is this young man who is going to sing Mario? Where is he? Ah, you will get him. But she must be here, too. Bene, bene. Oh, okay, good bene. So many thanks for your kind invitation, Signor Caparini, but I'm afraid I'll be in the way after all. I'll see you at home, dear. Good night. Paul. Your husband, she's not off the theater, eh? Mr. Arnold was a very distinguished scientist, Signor. He specializes in bacteriology. Bacteriology? Ah, bugs! <laughs> now, let me see, let me see. Where were we? Oh, yes, yes, yes. We were in the church of San Andrea, and... Uh, uh, Signor Caparini, as long as we have to work tonight, I think we'd be more comfortable in my apartment. Then Mr. Arnold wouldn't have to be alone. It'll only take me a few minutes to dress. All right. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Now I am going to talk to this young man who's going to play Mario. Hey, Enrico! Enrico! Enrico Martinelli!
Joe Nash. How do you do? Interior decorator. Interesting work. I expected you home earlier. It was nice of you to wait up for me. Uh, Miss Nash, would it be too much for you to... Uh... Oh, I always sleep like this. I'm so sorry. Of course you want to know why I'm here. Well, it's Tommy. But why? What, how did... He came over to my apartment across the hall. He woke up and his nurse was gone and so he came to me. But the servants, why didn't he wake them? Well, of course, it's their night out. Yes, so Tommy told me. We're very good friends. He comes to see me quite often. But Miss Wilson is nurse. Where's she? Oh, my good man, why ask me? She probably sneaks out every night after the servants go to bed. Mm -hmm. Look, let's put Tommy to bed, and I'll finish my sleeping at home. I'd have tucked him in long ago, only I promised I'd wait, and he wanted to stay here with me. Thanks so much, Miss Nash. You must realize how I appreciate your kindness. Oh, I do, and you're welcome. Now, let's put him to bed. Mm -hmm. Like children, Miss Nash? Oh, what a silly question. Like saying, do you like people? Some I do and some I don't. I like Tommy. Oh, good evening, Miss Wilson. Or is it good morning? You see, Mr. Arnold, my sister was ill. She telephoned this afternoon. Uh, that is this evening. Yes, and you had to leave so hurriedly that you didn't even have time to telephone anyone. Yes, that's it. Only I expected to get right back. Yes, and... So you left Tommy completely alone. Well, Miss Wilson, would you please leave again as quietly as you did before and take all your things with you? Uh, leave your address so I can send your check and go out the back door. Good night and goodbye. That was done with neatness and dispatch. If ever I need anyone fired, I shall certainly send for you. I should like to do something for you to show my appreciation. You know, many things could have happened tonight if it hadn't been for you. Suppose you hadn't been in. Suppose Columbus hadn't discovered America. <laughs> or suppose I go to bed. Good night, Mr. Arnold. Good night. So they say, they say, Caparini, they say, if we let her sing Carmen, they'll think she's the bull. So I say, all right, we'll show them the bull. And then, when they see them together, they'll know which is which. <laughs> well, good evening, gentlemen. You're making yourselves at home, I hope. Our hostess made us quite comfortable, thank you. I'll disperse that she's very good. Uh, cigar? No, thank you. Duran? Oh, no doubt you prefer your own. But, senor, those cigars are yours. As a matter of fact, Arnold, I prefer cigarettes. Now, the most important dramatic moments of La Tosca. Yes, the game is... I've been looking for you, Paul. I thought it would be nicer if we all discussed Tosca together. Well, if you can spare a moment, Momer, I'd like to discuss something else. Tommy. Why, yes, but... Miss Wilson has been leaving him alone at night. Where is she? She's gone, fired. Accident? 
can't understand it. She came so well recommended. Of course. You had no time to find out for yourself. That's not fair, Paul. And come along, Mona. This is important. Oh, don't let me keep you. I only thought that now you won't be seeing Duran so often, you might have a little time for Tommy. But since you haven't, why... Paul, I can't bear this any longer. Nor can I. Gentlemen, the house is yours. Good night. But Mr. Trevor, he lives here, doesn't she? I'd like some champagne. Pour me some, Carlos. Come on. Let's drink to everything. To you and me. And Tosca. Signor Caparini. And the new season. Mm, salute. 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 <laughs> the soldiers, they rush up to you. But you do not care. You mind she's made up. You love her, he's dead. What else have you to live for? I am sure I don't know. Look, Caparini, we have done enough for tonight, and Mona knows exactly what to do this summer. Don't you, Mona? Then everything is okay with me. We are all, what you say, set. Now we dismiss ourselves. Mona, don't you think you have had enough? You are not used to drinking, you know. But tonight's different. Coming, Duran? Presently. Can we drop you somewhere? Pretty late, you know. Early. Now, you're Italian. She needs much work. The vowels, uh, they are what you call a point. <laughs> now, don't forget your diet and your exercises. I won't. Thank you so much, Signor Caffarini. Good night. That's all right. Good night, dear. Better get Carlos out through the sun. I will. Don't worry about me, Ricky. Good night. Sleep well. Mona, how long are you going to stand for this sort of treatment? <laughs> I don't think my question was funny. But, but, but you look like, like an avenging angel. You can't go on like this, Mona. If Paul cared anything at all for you, he couldn't continually try to hurt you, humiliate you before everybody. <laughs> Carlos, you have no idea how funny you are. Funny? Yes. I am funny, am I? Yes. Well. You don't think. It would be more convenient for you if I didn't. You've got to let me explain. I have no doubt you could explain anything. But surely, Mona, you won't try to talk me out of what I've seen. But I've told you. Carlos means no more to me than Mona, anything. if your husband hasn't known all along that I love you, I'll tell him now. Carlos. Please, dear, don't try to protect me. Well, Arnold, what did you want to do about it? Please leave, both of you. I never want to see you again. You can't do this to me. You've got to listen. If you'd been frank enough to tell me that you loved this man, I might have had some respect for you. But to assure me of your devotion, what? But, Paul, it isn't true. You don't know what you're saying. I haven't. There isn't. I see. Oh, I suppose I should have known how little I mean to you. You couldn't have treated me as you have if you'd loved me. I guess vanity kept me from seeing the truth. I'll go, of course. Immediately. Tommy. For Tommy. If you take Tommy with you, I'll have legal possession of him within 24 hours. I'll sue for divorce, and by the time I'm through, they won't let you bring up a rabbit. You can't frighten me. I've done nothing, and I'm not afraid. Oh, Mona, this is all very silly. 
Why wait till Chapa this time of night anyway? You can get in tomorrow. You're right, Carlos. But if you think you can keep Tommy from me, you're very much mistaken. Arnold, the house is yours. Night. I know how you feel, darling, but don't worry about a thing. Just leave everything to me and we'll have it straightened out in no time. What shall I tell him, Mona? Where shall I take you? You? Why, you can't take me anywhere. like this all night. No wonder the bills are what they are. Ah. Oh, oh. land sakes, child, look out where you're going. Oh, I didn't go to do it, Aunt Hare. Well, then don't follow me. Phew. Cigarette smoke. Open the window, child, and I'll dump the ashes. They won't open, Aunt Hare. Well, unlock them, child. Oh. They still won't open, Aunt Hat. Well, push them, Martha, push them. Oh! Oh! They're open now, Aunt Hat. Oh, what did you put them there for, Aunt Hat? I'll show you what I put them there for. Mr. Paul, scaring a body to death. Buttons? Mrs. Arnold's gone. Gone? Gone where? I don't know. Oh, she'll come back, Mr. Paul. No, she's gone with someone else. I've been with your family since you were a boy, Mr. Paul. Long enough to know that you do a lot of suspicioning about nothing. Why, I know Mrs. Arnold well enough. She wouldn't do such a thing, Mr. Paul. Yes, but she did do it. I can't help but believe my own eyes. In a case of Mrs. Arnold and your eyes, I believe Mrs. Arnold. Everybody, please rise. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. This court is now in session. Very well, gentlemen, you may proceed. And although Mrs. Arnold's counsel has repeatedly attempted to impress us that no one in the public eye can be entirely free from slander. We cannot disregard the fact that Mrs. Arnold's name has been continually linked with Mr. Duran's by the press. And uh, this picture, Your Honor, regardless of my opponent's contention that it was taken on the stage, was not a posed picture, but was snapped in an unguarded moment and can scarcely be said to show 
Mrs. Arnold as resenting the possessive and lover-like attitude of Mr. Duran. The maid at the theater admits that Mr. Duran was continually in Mrs. Arnold's dressing room. And the housekeeper's niece cannot deny that Mr. Duran's name was a bone of contention in the Arnold household. True, Mrs. Arnold emphatically denies these charges. But we must not forget, Mrs. Arnold is an actress, well trained in the art of dissimulation. And we are forced to realize that any woman who allows herself to be put in such compromising positions can hardly be considered a fit guardian for a child. Again and again, Your Honor, we have been told by Mrs. Arnold's counsel of this mother's devotion to her child. Yet, consider the terror of that little boy, waking, alone, deserted. A nurse's carelessness? Yes. But is a paid caretaker responsible for the ultimate welfare of a child? or is a mother. We who are grown can hardly appreciate the terror of this baby, crying alone in the night for his mother, who at that very moment was with her admitted admirer. Then, not content to merely see this handsome and amorous young man in the theater. Your Honor, we have proof that Mrs. Arnold saw fit to bring this man to my client's home, forcing my client to leave his own house in order to avoid unpleasant contact with this man who was stealing his wife. Your Honor, I ask you to consider my client's feelings. When he returns hours later, not only to find Duran still there, and his wife in a pitiful condition of drunkenness, but to find the woman he loved in this usurper's arms. But what we must consider above all, Your Honor, is the tragedy of these immoral suggestions on the impressionable mind of a growing boy. It's hardly necessary to point out, Your Honor, that instead of imploring her husband's forgiveness, Mrs. Arnold willfully left her home, her husband, the child to whom she says she is devoted, and deliberately went away with this man in whose arms she had been found, the man she had apparently chosen. That's all, Your Honor. <clears throat> This court sees no reason why this child should be taken from his father. On the contrary, in view of the evidence, the court finds Mona Trevor Arnold an unfit and incapable guardian. I protest, Your Honor. Gentlemen, gentlemen, this court is adjourned. I'm sorry, Mrs. Arnold. doesn't look much like you now, Miss Trevor. No, it doesn't. What's more, Ella, it isn't. It isn't you, Miss Trevor. It looks awfully like you. <laughs> now you're contradicting yourself. Well, it's my twin sister, Anne. Put it back, Ella. This is the only one I want. See who that is. Well, Francie meeting me here. Carlos! It was no accident, I assure you. So now we're on the same ship. Oh, come now, Mona. It isn't like you to be obvious. You realize what this means, don't you, Carlos? No one could possibly believe in my innocence now. They never did, so what's the difference? I suppose that's true. Then you really don't mind. What's the use of minding? What difference can anything make? Oh, I hope... Uh, Seeing me will have made some difference. It does. I want you to go. Oh, no, Mona. You can't dismiss me like that. After what you've done. I had to see you. That's why. To beg your forgiveness for any trouble or unhappiness I've caused you. Oh, I don't even want to talk about it. No. 
Of course not, darling. But surely you must realize that if Arno had loved you, trusted you, nothing I could have done would have made any difference. Let's not go over all that again. But you know it's true. Believe me, Mona, my reasons weren't purely selfish. I wanted you to know, to realize how little he cared for you, how you were wasting your time in... How do you happen to be on this boat? Very simple. You cabled Caparini, you were coming to Miran. Caparini cabled me. So I just found which boat you were booked for, and here I am. Did it never occur to you that I might be in Milan? No. As a matter of fact, Carlos, much as it may surprise you, I haven't thought about you at all. There's only one thing I want to do, and that's forget. Then I have just a thing for that, a cocktail. Please, you're only being annoying. Annoying? I? I have it. Champagne. Hello? Give me the bar, please. Hello? We want a bottle of champagne in Miss Trevor's suite. Okay. Well, it'll be right up. You have a great deal of faith in yourself, haven't you, Carla? That I can make you forget? <laughs> yes. You need laughter and gaiety. You've been discreet and cautious. And has it brought you happiness? No, Mona, let me teach you how to look the whole world in the face and laugh. And you think you? Six, Mr. Paul, I've been looking all over for you. We've been for a while. Miss Nash is here. Infant. Don't infant me. I hate to see you with an electric train. Oh, thank you, George. His button, take his button. Well, how do you like living with my handiwork? Yeah, we'd like it much better if you came to see it oftener. Nice, polite man. Always saying the right thing. Oh, I've had a horrible day. From ten till now with a disgustingly wealthy battle axe who wanted the house done to express her personality. I'd almost suggested we have the walls tarred and feathered when fortunately she was called away. Do you always do things the way other people want them? No, but I make them think they want what they get. Practically the same thing. Well, I didn't seem to have a thing to say about this house. Yet if I'd known what I wanted, this would have been it. I'm professionally flattered, Mr. Arnold. <laughs> Honestly, Joan, we can't thank you enough for all you've done for us. I can't imagine what all these months would have been without you. I like you telling me what a nice person I am. Saves me telling you. Well, what's going on in the laboratory these days? You come along with me and I'll show you. Well, what do you think of it? Very workmanlike, I'm sure. But couldn't you discover things just as well with ruffle curtains on the window? Oh, or an etching or two over the cultures. Well, look at those windows. From the outside, they look like eyes without lashes. Surely window boxes on the outside wouldn't interfere with your work. Uh, tulips, perhaps? Or would you prefer... Look out, Joan, don't touch anything. I'm sorry I startled you, but it's difficult for the layman to realize the danger in those innocent little tubes. In this one alone, there are enough anterior polyomyelitis germs to kill off half of China. How perfectly fascinating. Well, now that I've been successfully scared to death, I won't need the, uh, in polio... Polyomyelitis. Infantile paralysis. As a matter of fact, young woman, that's what I was awarded the Academy Prize for last month. Now, isn't that dandy? Just good, clean fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Arnold, you should have seen a... Oh, a great, huge thing. Right out there in the hall. And it jumped at me. Did it bark at you, Martha? Oh, well, if you call it that, it went... Works better than I thought. It's a toy, Martha. Oh, 
come here just to tell us that? Oh, oh no, Mr. Arnold. I did come to tell you something else, but I got clean knocked out of my head. You go right back where you started from, Martha, and it'll come to you. It always works with me. Yes, Miss Nash. <laughs> Tie up your hound, young man, and come in here. I want to have a talk with you. No, not in here, Joan. Tommy knows better than that. No one enters this room but me. That's why I have a snap lock on this door. Want to see my new top? I'd love to. It's in my room. Come on. If you had any sense, you wouldn't either. Carissima, why do you do it? I cannot understand how you can go on the stage like this. Every night is the same thing, sometimes worse. Last night you were terrible. I tell you, you can go on like this. Your voice, you will not stand for it. Don't worry, Caparini. You can find plenty to step into my shoes tomorrow. Come on. Have a drink and forget it. Nice little bubbles. Make you forget everything. Carissima, doesn't your voice mean anything? Nothing. Nothing at all. I don't care about anything, Caparini. You are drunk. Yes. Let me talk to her. Let me talk to her. Oh, Carlos. Such egotism. Mona. Does it occur to you that unless you stop this sort of thing immediately, that you are through, washed up? So what? Certainly won't interfere with your career. But it's you I'm thinking about, Mona. Well, you picked a grand time to start thinking about me. Then for me, Mona. Surely you'll do this for me. Why? Why? Well, surely, Mona. I mean something to you. Do you? How long do you think you can make a fool of me? How long? <laughs> You're doing all right by yourself. Why should I try? Why you? You!
all over. Down the study! Where is down the study? Get her! Can you get out? Get out! Oh, where is the under study? <laughs> Sentimental bars. <laughs> if Mona were here, we'd have to have one to the ceiling. Huh? She always opened it everything. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm Plenty warm enough. Now I'm going to get your hot drink. Hmm? It's a fine time of night to be coming in. Honey, you haven't changed a bit. Hmm? <laughs> Here's your milk. Mona! Anne! Darling! Mona! How did you get in here? Through the door, of course. I left it off the latch when I took Horatio out to see Tommy. He thanks you very much for letting him see him. But, Joan, you shouldn't leave that door unlocked. I know, Grandfather, but you were here. As a matter of fact, you've been here for hours. Besides, I'm always excited on Christmas Eve. So don't try to squelch my girlish enthusiasm. <clears throat> Tommy's in bed now, so we can go on with the tree. Oh, Paul, go get it. It's behind the garage. I'll put Horatio to bed and close up. I found the stand we had last year, but it may need some wire. All right, I'll fix it. And Joan, don't you touch anything. I won't, but please hurry. Ah, come on now, Horatio. All right, in you go. Come on. Seems firm enough. As solid as Gibraltar. Here's the top piece. Let's start with that. Oh. Now, let me see. Where shall I put this one? Here? Here. Mm -mm. Here. We would let an interior decorator in on our Christmas tree. <laughs> you just try to keep me out. Now, Mrs. Buttons, must you put that sick pink right next to my gorgeous red? <laughs> Sorry.
looking for Santa Claus? I don't believe in Santa Claus. Oh. Now look, she's put an orange one not two inches from my yellow. <laughs> Come on. say no more about it. If you promise not to come downstairs again, what do you want? Horatio. All right, it's a deal. Horatio shall be yours. Now? Of course not. Tomorrow morning. Promise? Yes, I promise. Good. Good night. No. the rest of the silver while we go get some more of the toys? Well, it may not be according to house and garden, but it'll be on. <laughs> going to live with me. Good night, Horatio. Well, how many other of you? Anyway. Now, you better all go to bed. I'm not supposed to be in here, you know. Good morning, Ed. What's good about it? Hey? Oh, good morning, Miss Ann. Good I, morning. I got a letter for you. I think it's from Abel Dawes. Since she started dotting her eyes different, they can't tell. Yeah, there, there it is. It is from Mabel. And uh, yeah, that's a couple of days old. I, I didn't see it was for you yesterday. Well, thank you anyway. Hey? Good day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, Anne. Mine's always 
too weak or too strong. Why, Anne? What's the matter? Mona, dear, I suppose you'll have to see this. Mona, better let me do it. All right, Anne. Hello? Yes, Mr. Ronald's here, but I'd rather not disturb him right now. Is there anything I can do? Yes. Please tell me how Tommy is. I'm sorry to say that Tommy is very, very dangerously ill. But his mother, why wasn't she notified? His mother? Who is this speaking, please? Mrs. Arnold's sister. She must see the child, of course. She's here in America? Just a moment, please. I'll call Mr. Arnold. Hello? Hello? I spoke to Mr. Arnold. Yes? He said Mrs. Arnold was not notified because he did not want her here. But that's absurd. She's Tommy's mother. He begs Mrs. Arnold not to come, to consider Tommy in this crisis. It would hardly be fair to the child, now that he has forgotten her. Hello? Hung up. You heard? I can't understand why Paul should take that attitude. You'll have to let me see him, Anne. He can't keep me away. But my dear, he can. Let's face things, Mona. Paul has everything on his side. Legally, he can. I don't care, Anne. I'm going to see him. I don't know how, but I will. Mona, wait. I'm going, I tell you. You can't keep me. I'm not trying to keep you. I have an idea, Mona. Listen. If Paul doesn't want you to see Tommy, there are a dozen ways he can keep you away. Now, if I went, he'd have to see me. There isn't any legal weapon he could use against me. But I want to see Tommy myself. Get hold of yourself, Mona, and listen to me. As I was saying, there isn't any legal objection to my going. Now, if I went to see Paul, Buttons. It is, isn't it? I wasn't sure it's been so long since I've seen you. Land sakes, Miss Trevor. It's been almost five years since you visited us. You knew about the divorce, didn't you? Yes. That's what I came to see Mr. Arnold about. How's Tommy? He's very bad, Miss Trevor. Very bad. Well, please tell Mr. Arnold that I'd like to see him. Oh, Mr. Paul! Miss Trevor is here. Hello, Paul. I'm sorry to burst in on you like this, but I had to see you, welcome or not. Well, of course you're welcome, Anne. That's good of you, Paul. Oh, uh, Miss Joan Nash. 
My sister-in-law, Miss Trevor. How do you do? How do you do? What was it you wanted to see me about, Anne? About? Why, about... Oh, you can hardly realize what a trial all this has been to Paul, Miss Trevor. I'm afraid you won't find him quite himself. You've had such a long trip. Surely you'd like to freshen up a bit, wouldn't you? Oh, I should have thought of that. Joan is right about me not being myself. Uh, Buttons, we have a room for Miss Trevor, haven't we? Yes, of but, course. Oh, we can't expect Miss Trevor to stay. You don't realize the danger. Miss Joan's right. There is a great danger. I'd never forgive myself I'm if you... I'm not afraid. If it's quite convenient, I'd like to stay the night. Why, naturally, that's up to you. Oh, I'm ready now, Arnold. All right, Doctor, I'll be right there. I have some things to do in the laboratory. I don't know how long I'll be, but I'll see you as soon as I can. You've had your dinner, haven't you? Yes, thank you. Paul, I'm so sorry about Tommy. May I see him? Why, of course not, Anne. You probably don't realize what a grave condition the boy's in. The least shock, the least excitement. Oh, I don't like to be discouraging, Miss Trevor, but I'm afraid you've made a big mistake in coming here. Have I? Yes. Paul was adamant about your sister coming, and even if she did come, she couldn't possibly see Tommy anyway. You see, Miss Trevor, even if the child were well enough to see her, it wouldn't be fair to your sister or to him. Why open old wounds? I don't think we should discuss that, Miss Nash. It seems to me there's only one person qualified to judge. That's the child's mother. Perhaps you're right. But it's been my experience that mothers are often selfish. Will you excuse me? I've been helping here and there since Tommy's illness, and I have quite a few things to do. Certainly. May I use the telephone? Of course. In here. Here you are. Is there anything else? Could I get your phone book? No, thank you. Long distance, please. Hello, Anne? Are you all right, Mona? Did you get there? I knew it would work. You're still an actress, darling. How's Tommy? Oh, Anne, I haven't seen him yet. I think someone's coming. I'll call you again when I get a chance. Goodbye. Your room is ready now, Miss Trevor. Excitement might cause the end, Miss Trevor. Yes. Yes, of course. I hope you'll be very comfortable, Miss Trevor. And if you want anything, just ring. Thank you very much. And if I can do anything for you? There's nothing, thank you. Is he still? He's still alive, that's all. I've got to see him. Impossible. My dear woman, you don't know what you're doing. As long as there's life, there's hope. But if you went in there now... Oh, it won't hurt him. I know it won't. You see, I'm his...
Oh, Dr. Rand, this is uh, Miss Trevor, Tommy's aunt. How do you do? How do you do? I've told Miss Trevor it's impossible for anyone to see the boy. And of course, Anne, you wouldn't want to be responsible for the death of your, your nephew. Oh, no. No. I think I've got something, Doctor. Come along. Pardon me. Here, darling. It is mother. Tommy, do you hear me? I'm here. You're all right, darling. Don't be afraid of anything, Tommy. Don't be afraid of anything. Mother. Yes, darling. Yes. I've come home. And I'm never going to leave you again. Oh, my darling. <gasps> Sleeping naturally. The fever is broken. I don't understand this, Miss Trevor. Did the child know you very well? You see, Dr. Wren, Miss Trevor is Mrs. Arnold's twin sister. Tommy must have thought she was his mother. Then if he continues to believe it, he'll continue to improve. Can you remain with him, Miss Trevor? Oh, yes. Let me stay with him. You're a brave woman. I think Mr. Arnold has a lot to thank you for. I'll get some of your things, Mrs. Arnold. Isn't it strange, Paul, for a child to mistake his mother? Well, not in this case. You've only to see the two sisters together to realize that. Let's tell each other the truth. You know that woman is Tommy's mother, don't you? Were you trying to fool me or yourself, Paul? Oh, I don't know. Really, I don't. I didn't know it until I saw her with Dr. Rand. I tried to tell myself that it wasn't true, that Mona wouldn't come here, that Tommy and I didn't mean enough to her. What do you intend to do about it? Do? What is there to do? Dr. Rand has asked her to stay. After all, it did save Tommy's life. It's hard to believe that a woman like that could be cheap, tricky. She got herself here by a trick, Paul. A trick? Do you call it a trick that she threw her pride away? That she came back to the house of a man who'd... Whether she had to act a part to save a boy's life? Oh, you can't call that a trick. You still love her, don't you, Paul? And she's probably fool enough to forgive you. Do you really think so? 
Anyhow, I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. Now, come on. Joan. You're a peach. Yes. I know. We can talk tomorrow, Paul. No. Now, Anne. It's important. What is it about? Of course, I can never thank you enough for what you've done. But I hoped you would try to do something else for me. Of course, Paul. What is it? Anne, you've got to help me get Mona back. But when I asked about Mona on the telephone... You telephone? But I knew nothing of your telephoning. No. No, of course not. It was a mistake. Anne, listen. I've wronged Mona terribly. Only she and I can know how much. I've been a jealous, stubborn fool. Will you marry me again, Mona? You knew about Milan? Paul? Oh, yes. You and Joanne were singing for Caparini. With rest and care, you'll soon regain your voice. I'll never interfere with your career again. Oh. This is all the career I want. You. And Tommy. But Milan, Paul. That shadow would always be between us. Now that we have each other, and Tommy, are we going to be afraid of shadows? <laughs> 